Hello everyone, in last class we had discussed that there are different types of nerve endings in our skin mainly mechanical type nerve endings and thermal nerve endings which are responsible for getting signal from our clothing and now we will discuss the mechanical nerve endings. As we have mentioned that there are two types of nerve endings as far as structure is concerned one is corpuscular nerve ending and free nerve ending. And uh, the corpuscular nerve endings are responsible for specific type of sensation like touch, pressure, cold, heat okay. and we know that there are different types of nerve endings. So, we will discuss here mainly seven different types of nerve endings Pacinus corpuscle, Meissner's corpuscle, Merkel's nerve ending, Krause's end bulb, Ruffini ending, hair follicle nerve ending and free nerve ends. So, this seven are directly mechanoreceptors are directly related with our clothing comfort. Sensation our skin gets sensation through all these nerve endings and this free nerve ending actual ultimately it is projected up to the epidermis which gets signal with a cold fiber or pain fiber. So, they are projected into the epidermis zone. So, we will start with the patient is corpuscle. So, if you see the patient is corpuscle its location is at the tip as we have already mentioned. Now, let us see what are the their functions. Okay. This mechanism receptor is responsible for pain and pressure sensation and detects gross pressure change and vibration. Okay. So, it sense the pressure or pressure change okay. and also the vibration and pessimist corpuscles are capable to rapid vibration and can sense any vibration even from few centimeter away from the skin. So, it sends two sensations one is the pressure and also the vib rapid vibration. Okay. It is it gets optimal signal at as we have mentioned around 250 hertz and this is the frequency range generated by finger tip by texture less than 200 micron. So, it gives the any sensation when our finger moves through someone. So, pessimist corpuscle comes into picture which sense the rapid vibration of that. This nerve endings are responsible it did, uh, this respond when the skin is rapidly indented, okay. but do not respond when pressure is steady. So, this actually it is a it gives a rapid change in it sends rapid change in pressure, okay. but steady pressure it does not give signal. Next is the Meissner's corpuscle or it is called tactile corpuscle because it gets signal of touch. So, Meissner's corpuscle as we have seen this is the Meissner which is close to the epidermis. So, these mechanoreceptors are responsible for light touch it is a tactile touch and these are dis distributed throughout the skin, but concentration is very high to those place where 
sensitivity is high in touch. There are although they are uh, very uh, if we all uh, distributed throughout our skin throughout our body, but the places where the very sensible place sensitive places the uh, this receptors the basinal receptors concentration is very high like palm, leaf, tongue okay, and uh, fingertip these are the places where we can sense any touch with a even a with a very small lower level of sensation okay, that we can also detect. So, the concentration if we see of this Meissner say are very high and where we can make out the places of our body where the sensation of light touch is uh, less the this uh, type of uh, sensors make a uh, Meissner's uh, corpuscle are um, less or sometime we may uh, see that it may actually it fails the Meissner's corpuscle are not getting signal they are not active that means it is not it is not able to sense any touch. Okay. In case of any deformation in the Meissner's corpuscle cause an action potential in the nerve. So, any touch small touch okay, they get any deformation in this corpuscle if we suppose this is the corpuscle here any do with the dip, uh, by touch small touch very light touch it gets deformed and it gives signal. Okay. The deformation gives signal and as the as these are quickly adapting what does it mean quickly adapting they when touches we are, we are touching it gets signal immediately and it adapts quickly adapting means it gets it uh, adapts and ultimately it uh, generates signals immediately, but the signal fades out quickly. Okay. This is called quickly adapting. So, the action potential generates in the knob decreases rapidly. What does it mean? Suppose a light touch is there and there is no movement. Ultimately, we will feel nothing is in touch with our body. Uh, best example is that we are wearing cloth. When we move our body, it gets it we feel that there is a cloth in our body, but suppose we are actually sitting idle quietly no movement. We sometime may uh, feel that the that the presence of clothing we may not feel. That means, this tactile sensation uh, sensor it is quickly adapting and it actually the sensation ultimately seized out. Due to this action we stop feeling the cloth clothing after certain time the presence of clothing we stop feeling that okay, there is because it is it's adapted immediately. Okay. But if we change our posture it moves then again it, it comes into the picture. Okay. Due to the superficial location this is the superficial location okay. in the dermis this mechanical receptors are particularly sensitive to touch and vibration light vibration okay, okay, low frequency, but they cannot detect properly because they can only sense that something is in touch. Okay. It cannot detect the uh, differentiate okay. this particular receptor cannot differentiate the to what which thing is in touch okay. is it uh, due to the age or due to something, but it can only detect that something is in touch. For age type uh, sensor age type detection there are different types of sensors, sensors are there. Okay, this only gives the sensation okay, that is something is in touch with our body. Okay. Next come the Merkel's nerve ending. These nerve endings are responsible for providing information regarding age pressure and texture. So, and you will see that Merkel's nerve endings are also at the close to the surface. So, this type of 
nerve endings there actually it sense the edge type or texture it can differentiate the texture texture of fabric suppose we are wearing one smooth cloth or maybe some rough cloth for that type of touch the merkel nerve, nerve ending will give us the sensation and it's not the quickly adapting it's it's a slowly adapting it actually it can differentiate okay and this type of sensor gives the actually sensation for long time it's a slowly adapting type and that is called sustained response is there okay to the mechanical deflection of the tissues or less than 1 micro so this is the actually this is structurally rigid and not encapsulated this is a rigid one and it's not encapsulated like earlier okay so that is slowly adapting means it gives sustained information sustained sensation sustained response but if it is quickly adapting it will quickly sense adapt and its sensation will ease okay it its sensation will actually stop see the merkel's nerve ending is due to the sustained response to pressure this nerve endings are classified as slowly adapting and uh, they are actually responsible for uh, their most sensitive mechanical receptors at low frequency level earlier one was high frequency level they are low frequency level with it then uh, the krauss end bulb which is not directly related with the our uh, clothing comfort but we must know these are actually present in the conjunctivity of our eye okay so this mechanical receptor of human skin have the ability to detect low frequency vibration okay and this can be actually we can find this say for some specific part of human like transparent lubricating mucous membrane so where the transparent membranes are there on those places we get this type of sensor like your uh, leaf tongue okay and uh, eye the, this type of places we will we get this sensation next is the ruffinis ending this is the ruffinis ending if we see the location is in the dermis which shown okay these are again slowly adapting spindle shaped mechanical receptors only in the glabrous region these are present only in the glabrous region means there where there is no hairs Okay, this type these are also slowly adapting uh, sensor and subcutaneous uh, tissue so it is sensitive to skin stretch and contributes to the kinesthetic sense like if we move our palm it gives some movement or we are moving this cell so this type of this uh, ruffinis ending gives signal of this type of sensation it controls finger move position and movement this type of nerve endings are there so this mechanical receptors sense and monitor the slipping of object like our just moving my hand it's a slipping of object this type of uh, this uh, ruffinis ending gives this type of sensation like our um, uh, body cloth is moving from our body okay that's the, this type of sensation it gives and a slipping of garment on one's body this is a ruffinis ending is responsible for sensing getting signal from this type of sensors located deep in the skin in this places okay and registered register mechanical deformation within the joint okay and then comes the hair follicle nerve ending it's a, it's a throughout our uh, skin the hairs are there and the the our uh, clothing directly interact with the this hairs okay and even before it interacts with our skin it's in touch with our hairs and due to the hair movement the hair follicle 
uh, nerve endings receive the signal and gives the total uh, sensation to the sense sensation to the brain. These are the mechanoreceptors present at the base of the hair follicle. These are this is the hair follicle and this is at this point at the base these are this nerve endings. Okay. For any movement of hair it gets stretched or contracted and gets sent signal. These are sensory nerve wrapped around each hair bulb. So, this is the hair bulb and it wrapped around the hair bulb. During bending or pulling of hairs, if it bends or the pulling of hairs, this gets this nerve ending gets stimulated and gives signal. And also grease and oils comes out they are associated with this. Okay. They, they, these are not uh, in our domain. Okay. Now, try to see these are the, this is the skin human skin very nice picture and let us take one hair this is one hair this hair is projected above the skin. Now, if you see inside the skin this hair and these are the nerve endings these are the hair follicle nerve endings they are wrapped around this thing and any movement of hair in any, any any pulling or any movement it gets it gets signal and send signal to the spinal cord and brain. Okay. Then comes uh, free nerve ending which is a last type of mechanical receptors and free nerve endings are very common very commonly available throughout our skin. Okay. And this free nerve endings are present at different locations. The free nerve endings are most common type of nerve endings and are most frequently found in the skin. Okay. It conveys sensory information from periphery of the body to the brain, because its location if we see it is very close to the it is it is in the epidermis. In the epidermis this free nerve endings are present and any information it sends to the brain. It is mainly it mainly detects the pain type of sensation may be cold or may be mechanical pain, uh, pain or may be warm okay. as these are free nerve they, they are not capsulated it is uncapsulated have no complex sensory structure these are open no complex structure okay. and these are basically uh, this penetrates the epidermis that we have discussed and it goes up to the stratum granulosum okay, granular layer of the epidermis. Okay. If you see this as the epidermis this goes up to this layer okay, okay, up to this layer and this is epidermis total epidermis okay. and this is rapidly adapting intermediate, intermediate adapting and slow adapting this we will we get this sense uh, this uh, free nerve endings are of different types of nerve endings. They can sense the mechanical sensation, they can sense the thermal sensation, they can sense the pain sensation that is no noci receptors. So, a particular nerve ending free nerve ending can be of polymodulity uh, different types of sensation they can give. Okay. They are responsible for sensing mechanical stimuli like a touch, pressure, prick, stretch, temperature, pain. So, free nerve endings are uh, it is not like uh, specific capsulated nerve ending, these are actually um, uh, this gives the polymodality, okay, multiple stimulation. Now, we will discuss the skin tactile mechanical receptors and sensory display. So, this uh, these are the different uh, sensors we have discussed till now. Now, how this type of sensors displays the sensory stimulation uh, with the clothing. Okay. So, uh, you see that uh, pessimist uh, and corpuscle that we have discussed it is in short it is a vibration and tickle, Meissner corpuscle touch 
motion, vibration, okay, Merkel cell age pressure, Ruffinus corpuscle stretch, shear tension, hair follicle touch, vibration okay, and proximity also. Proximity means suppose something is very close to uh, my uh, skin, through the uh, hair it gets the signal. Okay. Even blowing air, blowing air, air is blowing, hair will move, okay, it will give signal. So, all these signals it gets, gets. Now, we will discuss the mechanical sensation okay, which we perceived through the um, uh, clothing. Okay. Due to clothing, we get different types of mechanical sensations. Okay. The sensations related to the mechanical stimuli when we are clothed okay, are of four different types. We will discuss one by one. One is called wear sensation during activity. So, after clothing, when we do activity, what happens? Our cloth okay, it moves from the body it starts moving and then what happened? This cloth during moving we get different types of sensation, it touches, it releases uh, from the body, it slips. So, this type of sensation we get wear sensation, then the clothing gives prickle sensation, each sensation or rashes. So, this we can uh, combine into one uh, type of stimulation because they are related. Prickle each rash, these are related. If the skin starts prickling, one particular fabric gives prickle sensation, we will discuss in detail. It also will give each sensation if it is extreme prickle and if it start itching, then it will give rash. So, prickle each and rash they are actually interlinked to each other. Third one is that the touch and pressure sensation, it is a soft touch, the soft touch sensation and a pressure sensation, it is a high pressure sensation, low pressure and high pressure, low pressure sensation means touch and high pressure, it is a sometime it may be pain type of sensation. And last one is that roughness or scratchiness the roughness and scratchiness is it is totally different from prickle each rashes. Roughness is related to the to the surface texture of clothing and prickle sensation is related with the the amount of or number of hairs the stiff hairs present in the surface. Okay. These things are different we will discuss in details. Okay. Now, we will start with the wear type of sensation what is wear type of sensation is the, the clothing is in continuous contact with the skin of most of the part of our body. This contact may be dynamic or static. So, when we move it uh, starts giving dynamic sensation. What is dynamic sensation? Means it, it starts slipping or it uh, get in touch and it uh, release touch or it gives pressure. So, this type of sensations we uh, get in the body and static contact means we are not moving okay. this gives. and when the person moves you know there is dynamic contact the cloth touches different types of uh, different parts of the body okay, which results different dynamic sensation. One is that uh, the at different body part we get different sensation. So, one part we get uh, higher pressure, other part we get lower pressure okay. and even it spreads over different part of the body with different sensation. Different sensation means different types of receptors present at different concentration, we get different sensation and this total sensation we get it uh, from the brain we get ultimately total uh, sensation. That means, we are not we cannot uh, no, ultimately when we get comfort sensation, we do not get the whether it is a high pressure or low pressure or it is a ultimately we get a combined sensation. Okay. This is uh, in dynamic condition. Okay. So, pressure due to pressure difference, 
due to different type of sensitivity, we get overall wear sensation. Okay. So, due to change in activity level, what happened? The different activity level of the human body, the body physiology, physiological parameters changes. So, uh, suppose a particular cloth, particular garment, when a person sitting idle, it gives certain sensation. Okay. Now, when activity, he is doing activity, so wear sensation during activity. So, his physiological parameters will change. So, what are the physiological parameters? His sweating rate will change, his rate of sweating. Then temperature of the skin will change. As the temperature of the skin changes due to body physiology, its moisture in the skin will change. So, what will happen? If all these parameters changes, that means the skin characteristics will change and interaction with the garment will automatically change. So, that person, the person who if he when he is not active, he will get altogether different stimuli or get uh, all different sensation than when he is active. Okay. He is in and which this activity generates different types of thermal stimuli also. That means, suppose a, a very common example, we are wearing a cloth cotton garment, cotton cloth, okay. it is very comfortable because it is not sticking to the body, body is not wet, but when a person is starts sweating due to its physical activity, okay. the physiological parameters changes the skin gets wet completely wet and his total interaction with the garment changes and total sensation of the garment with the body it is totally changed. That means, you will feel totally different it gets you will get totally different sensation than when he was actually dry. So, depending on the interactive phenomena of clothing with the skin in terms of heat and moisture, the mechanical stimuli also changes. That means, he will start getting say like oh, if it is uh, if the cloth is sticking to its body, he will start getting stretch. Okay. Changing also the clothing also move towards and away from the body. That means, a person when he is moving due to the bellow effect, the clothing will start moving towards and away. The air will pump inside, it will throw the clothing, it send the clothing away from the body. So, this will also give different types of stimulation. So, this is a, um, for um, basically this type of moving away and close to the body, in touch with the body. This is happening, this is very common phenomena when a person is wearing a loose fit uh, garment and he gets different types of new meco, uh, mechanical stimuli, different stimuli uh, for the same fabric it gives different sim stimulation. Okay. Sometime it gives uh, stretching of the skin, sometime it gives uh, pressure, sometime it gives uh, uh, touch uh, light touch. Okay. These are okay, possible for loose uh, fit garment. But what happened with the body fit garment, tight fit garment? Tight fit garment also gives uh, different stimulation because of the stretching of the garment. Stretching of the garment it gives a higher and lower pressure, press different types of pressure. So, we get we get a different altogether different sensations when our uh, this uh, fabric um, our body moves when we are in active. So, this activity uh, during activity, we, we get a different sensation due to body movement, due to stretching of the garment, due to uh, change of physiological parameter, due to change of body heat. Okay. Even a person may feel comfortable with a fabric um, say at a lower temperature, when the skin is not wet. 
but the same fabric may be may give a prickle sensation. Suppose a woolen cloth, if we are wearing, it's giving it's not giving prickle sensation. Okay, but when the skin becomes wet due to activity, it will start giving prickle sensation. That this phenomena we'll discuss in detail. Okay, because of the softening of the our uh, skin. Okay. So, new mechanical stimuli it gives. Next, we will discuss start now prickle, itch, and rashes. That is we have discussed earlier. So, that uh, this uh, prickle, itch, and rashes are of similar type of sensation we get. Okay. These are interrelated. So, what is prickle? Prickle, one of the most common type of discomfort sensation related with the mechanical stimuli when we wear clothing. This is the most common type of discomfort. The complain about the prickle for those clothing which are used next to the skin. Okay. So, we get uh, definitely when the clothing the particular clothing in touch with our body those those uh, for those clothing we get the prickle sensation. For example, a person feels prickle sensation when he wears a clothing woolen inner garment specially made of coarse wool and he is wearing in hot and humid climate. Definitely he will say get sensation of prickle sensation if we give all these conditions okay. like woolen inner garment he has to wear coarser wool in hot and humid condition. These are the ideal condition for getting the prickle sensation. So, now we will uh, try to understand why prickle, what are the factors which actually control prickle sensation and if we understand then we can develop fabric, develop clothing of prickle free clothing, each free clothing or rash free clothing okay, which will give very comfortable clothing. So, prickle is usually it is not a single point, it is a many gentle pin pricks, it is not the it is not pricking inside the skin, okay. it is not that, it is a it is a sensation generated from many such prickles, okay, pricks. Okay. It is common perception that the woolen fabric gives prickle sensation due to allergy it is not that because some people may get allergy with the woolen, but wool coarse wool particularly in this condition with hot and humid condition gives prickle sensation to everyone. So, prickle sensation is nothing to do with the this uh, our allergy okay. it has been proved. So, the degree of discomfort caused by prickle sensation it varies with the person to person. A person I may feel prickle sensation very high prickle sensation, but someone else may not feel. Okay. But prickle sensation will be there definitely, but degree may be different type of skin the sensitive skin will get high prickle sensation and humidity and temperature of atmosphere as well as the microclimate. So, in microclimate the temperature and humidity changes we get different types of prickle sensation and type of fiber used in clothing. So, if we understand the interrelationship between all these factors then we can develop a cloth without prickle sensation. Now, let us see one experiment. In this experiment so, it is actually try, uh, it has been tried to understand the type of sensor responsible for prickle, whether this sensor is some is uh, same as the touch type sensor. So, here what is done the uh, at this point okay, at the upper arm. So, here the, the forearm okay, the relationship between prickle and each sensation and human 
cuteness small nerves has been studied where the skin sensations were tested in the forearm of different volunteers. So, at this point forearm the sensations were detected. The due, uh, with the, by using inflating the blood pressure cuff okay, at 270 millimeter Hg at the upper arm okay, that has been inflated. So, pressure has been generated this is done to stop the supply of oxygen okay, so that the skin uh, does not get the, uh, the blood and the touch and prickle sensation has been studied using some object. Okay. Now, what is observed here? This is the sensation. The x axis gives the time and y axis give the sensitivity. Okay. Sensitivity level. Two types of sensitivity level has been studied. One is touch type sensitivity, another is prickle type sensitivity. So, what has been observed? The touch sensation it drops quickly and this is around say 20 minute time. Okay, say. So, touch sensation stops drops quickly that means, the person st stops sensation of touch after 20 minutes and by that time the prickle sensation st increases it continues to increase that means, this touch and prickle sensations are actually two different types of sensors are responsible. That means, this is actually it is proved that touch sensors are, uh, sensor are actually mechanical pain sensors. Some pain sensor that uh, free free nerve bendings present in the this uh, surface of the skin okay, the epidermis zone. Okay. These are responsible for this type of pain sensation which gives the prickle sensation and it, it goes up to uh, this uh, uh, point maximum point and then it drops and here it is actually skin loss is uh, actually total sensation. It is a total complete anesthesia is there. So, that means that uh, prickle sensation is totally different from the touch sensation. So, the conclusions drawn here the touch and prickle sensation changes with the time and the prickle sensation are associated with the small nerve fibers okay, that the free nerve bindings and touch sensation drops continuously it is consistently from the beginning initially at slower rate and then suddenly drops okay, and completely lost after 20 minutes. Whereas, the prickle sensation it is evoked by pain temperature and fabric type. So, here the in the study what they have done different at different temperature it has been studied at uh, different types of fabrics and different types of humidity and this prickle sensation has been observed that it uh, this is uh, initially it increases and then drops rapidly sensation remains up to uh, 40 minutes. Okay. So, this is actually uh, prickle sensation is uh, by some pain sensors okay. at that point complete anesthesia is there at that point up to that point just before the complete anesthesia people start we uh, start feeling the uh, prickle sensation. Okay. Now, we will discuss the different studies conducted for to study the prickle characteristics of different types of fabrics. So, the studies carried out on prickle characteristics of fabrics reveal. So, what are the findings of this study? For the initiation of pain sensation, the summation of response from pain group nerves are required. It is not the single prick single point will not give us the prickle sensation. It is a group of uh, nerves has to give send signal. 
then only we will get if one or couple of few uh, nerves give the sensor it will not ultimately give prickle sensor we may give uh, get something else but it will not give the prickle sensation okay summation of response from pain group of cells this is very important fabric evoked prickle is result of lower activity low activity of nosy receptor what is that so nosy receptors is basically a damaging when it something is penetrating inside the body that uh, type of pain it is not that type of uh, activity it is a low activity when say wool fiber if it penetrates inside the it tries to penetrate the skin that type of low activity will give the prickle sensation okay. the stimulation is produced by the actually the uh, the amount of um, load it is uh, around 75 milligram force. So, that actually that uh, the protruding fiber ends has to produce that type of that much actually force okay, or more to the skin. So, one fiber will not give that type that much uh, force. So, if we talk about the large number of fibers and if it produces if it gives this type of uh, this much force or more then we will start getting the prickle sensation. If it cannot give the type of force then we will not feel like this is only possible of where if the fibers are stiff or if the fiber ends are less projected hairs are less uh, size, less size and stiffer then only it will give the that um, uh, much uh, force. Otherwise, what will happen if the fibers are longer enough and fine fibers? What will happen when it will try to give that force before it uh, penetrates? It will bend, so it will not be able to give the prickle sensation. For prickle sensation, the fiber end has to penetrate and has to give this much that 75 at least uh, milligram force force. Okay. So, protruding fiber has to give these things and to have prickle sensation a minimum number of high load bearing ends should be there. It is not that the few fibers are giving a prickle sensation of so a load of say 75 suppose one particular needle is giving a force of 75 milligram force or say 100 milligram force so one needle gives do we feel prickle sensation we will not feel prickle sensation although the number of an amount of force is very high it has to be more than this and also number of fibers has to be uh, more okay so there so we'll uh, discuss we will continue discussing on this issue different types of studies on prickle sensation in the uh, next talk. Okay. Thank you.